Your Autolite dealer presents your favorite friends from Gasoline Alley. Hold it, Wilmer. Cut that engine till I get this phone. Okay, Skizek. Wallet and Bobble Garage, Skizek's wallet speaking. What's that? Oh, yes, sir, we can fix it. We can fix anything on four wheels. Sure, we'll be waiting for you right here in Gasoline Alley. Yes, it's Gasoline Alley, the comic strip that's a favorite in more than a hundred great newspapers. In this episode, The Adventure of the Hair-Raising Experience, Wilmer finds a way to use his head without troubling to use his mind. But right now, a word from the friendly Autolite dealer in your own hometown. Now, Gasoline Alley. Skeezix is surprised to find Wilmer busily at work in the office. Since the dark board has been moved to the back of the shop, Wilmer hasn't been much interested in the front office. Gee, Wilmer, I didn't expect to find you here. Well, Skeezix, old boy, I thought it's about time I did a little paperwork. Oh, you at last realize that paperwork is part of running a garage, too. But I do, Skeezix. You gotta be able to make intelligent conversation with the customers, just like a barber. What are you talking about, Wilmer? Paperwork. I just finished reading the sports section. Now I'm going to cover the comics, and then I'm oh, going... Oh, no. I might have known that the only kind of paperwork you do is that kind. Anyway, I want to tell you I'm leaving the garage for a couple of hours and you're in charge. Uh, anything special you want done? Yes, Mr. Curley's coming in to pick up his car. That's the sedan we just winterized. He's a tough customer, Wilmer. Handle him with kid gloves. Don't worry about a thing, Skizix. I'll have Mr. Curley eating out of my hand. Well, watch out. He doesn't snap off a couple of fingers. He's got a terrible disposition. See you later. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, sure, what can I do for you? You can't do anything for me, but you might be able to fix up my car. Uh, that's what we're here for. Wallet and Bob can fix anything on four wheels. Uh, my name's Alec Boyd. I fix anything with falling hair. Well, that's one trouble an automobile doesn't have. <laughs> very good, very good. True words are never spoken. But this car of mine has trouble. Believe you me, it has trouble. Every time I step on the starter, all I get is a clicking noise. Well, it's not so bad, Mr. Boyd. I'll be able to fix it up this afternoon. I don't think there's much more to do and install a new starter. Yeah, well, that doesn't sound too good to me. Uh, about how much does a job like that cost? Well, if I don't find anything else wrong, it should come to around um, uh, $32 with a buck and a half for installation. $32, dollar and a half, 33 cents a uh, By the way, Bob, it's a lucky thing for you. I happen to come your way. It is? Yes, sir. My friend... Do you realize that you're on the road to baldness? Baldness? Are you kidding? I've got hair I haven't even used yet. Why, I won't even go to the barber till I get a wholesale rate. Yes, sir, Bob. That's the first sign of baldness. Too much hair. It is? Wait a minute. How can you be bald if you've got too much hair? It always gets thick like that just before it falls out. The calm before the storm. Well, you've heard the old expression, hair today, gone tomorrow. Yeah, hey, that's right. Your words were never spoken, but don't despair, my friend. Alec Boyd is here to help you. Well, um, uh, uh, what would you advise me to do? I don't want to be bored. And you don't have to be. Now, it just so happens that I have in the back of my car, fortunately for you, the solution to your urgent problem. Gosh, I'm lucky. What is it? One of nature's miracles, a secret formula brewed originally by an aborigine from the roots of a Kamakura tree and passed down from father to son for seven generations. I happen to be the sole possessor of that priceless formula. Gosh, Mr. Boyd, I, I'd certainly appreciate it if you'd let me have a bottle. I'm going to do better than that, son. Um, how much did you say it was going to cost me to have that starter fixed? Uh, about $32 for the starter and a dollar and a half for installation. Yes, thirty-three fifty, thirty-three fifty. My good friend, you are indeed fortunate. It just so happens that I have in the back of my car here an entire case of my Camacola Magic Hair Draw. I'm going to let you buy it for me. Gosh, thanks. That's very generous of you. How, how, how much is it? <laughs> By some strange quirk of fate, it so happens that this case of Magic Hair Elixir will come to exactly $33.50. $33. Hey, that's what it's going to cost you to get your car fixed. So it is. So it is. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> now, I'll be back for it later this afternoon. I see you have another customer coming, so I'll be running along. 
Goodbye, my dear, dear friend. So long, Mr. Boy. Thanks a million. Boy, what a break. I escaped baldness by a hair's breadth. Hey, Bubble. I've come to my car. Did you fix it? Uh, we, we did a lot of work on it, Mr. Curly, sir. We uh, cleaned and adjusted the distributor points, checked the generator charging rate, refilled the steering gear. All oh, you mechanics talk a good game. Well, um, uh, take a look at the motor yourself. <laughs> See how clean she is. I can't be bothered. Had a stiff neck for days. Gosh, Mr. Curly, I'm awful sorry to hear it. What do you care? It's not your neck. Say, um, uh, Mr. Curly, I never knew before that you were bald. What's that? What did you say, well, Bubba? I, I, I didn't mean anything, Mr. Curly. Honest, I didn't. You're too fresh. This is the last time I ever come into this garage. Well, I, I only meant that you don't have to be bald if you don't want to. I suppose you think I'm bald by choice. Do you know I was almost bald? You were? With that head of hair? Sure, that's why I used Tamakora to magic hair grow. Hey, what nonsense are you trying to hand me? It's not nonsense, Mr. Curly. This stuff is one of nature's miracles. Here, let me give you a bottle. You're, you're sure this stuff is good? Why, Mr. Curly, I use it myself. Here, here let, let me rub some into your scalp for you right now. Ow, 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 be careful, Bubba. Careful, I've got a stiff neck. Oh, uh, well, uh, maybe you better do it yourself at home. Here, take the bottle. Well, well, thanks. Uh, you'll be hearing from me. Bye, Mr. Curly. Remember, rub it in vigorously twice a day. Hi, Wilmer. Wasn't that Mr. Curly who just drove off? Yo, but I was, Skizix, old boy, and he's a mighty pleased man since we fixed his baldness. Wilmer, what are you talking about? A customer drove in here and sold me a case of Camacora hair growth. I gave Mr. Curly a bottle free for nothing. You what? Sure. Besides doing a good job in his car, we've probably given him a brand new head of hair. Wilmer, are you out of your mind? Huh? If there's anything wrong with that quack's hair lotion, Mr. Curly will probably sue us for everything we've got. Now back to Gasoline Alley and the adventure of the hair-raising experience. Not content with winterizing Mr. Curley's car, Wilmer has also tried rejuvenating his scalp. Convinced by Skeezix that Camacora hair grow lotion may be a dangerous thing, Wilmer is now frantically trying to warn Mr. Curley. No, not, not there. But, uh, are you sure this is very important? Well, well, do you know where I could reach him? No? Well, thanks, anyhow. Oh, Skeezix, this is awful, Wilmer. That was really stupid. Well, maybe it isn't so serious after all, Skeezix. He can lose his hair if he hasn't got any in the first place. Well, it's still a very dangerous thing to go around handing out patent medicines that you don't know anything about. Skeezix, that gives me an idea. I'm going to experiment on myself. Then we'll know what to expect. Oh, it's a shame, Wilmer. You used to have such nice hair. Go, go on, Skeezix. Pour some on my head. Wilmer, I hate to do this, but you asked for it. That's a skeezy so boy. Pour it on liberally like the bottle says. There. Uh, how does it look, Skeezix? How does my hair look now? As though something had made a nest in it. Say, Skeezix, do you smell something like burning brakes? Wilmer. Wilmer, you, you didn't leave the electric soldering iron plugged in, did you? No, I haven't used it today. I wonder... Wilmer, it's you! What? It's that stuff in your hair. Oh, no, Skeezix. Hello, boys. My car ready yet? Gosh, it's Mr. Boyd. Uh, uh, we were just uh, talking about you. So you're the man who sold Wilmer that hair tonic. Yes, sir, Bob. I'm the good Samaritan of whom you speak. And believe you me, I arrived in the nick of time. You mean you arrived in time to nick him? Gosh, Skeezix, be fair. It didn't do me any harm. And it didn't do you any good, either. Not do him any good? Why, just look at that head of hair. He's a veritable Samson. You may have convinced Wilmer, Mr. Boyd, but you can't convince me. And I'm not going to let you have your car until you can prove yourself. I think your hair tonics are fake. Believe you me, no one has ever before said such unkind things about Kamakara, the magic hair girl. But just a moment. You see this picture I have in my hand? Yeah, it's a, it's a picture of a bald man. Gee, I've never seen anyone as bald as that. Excellent visionary, good friend. Now, if you look closely, you will recognize that man as myself. The same innocent look, the same honest eyes. Right? I don't think that's a very good advertisement for your hair tonic. That's my whole point, good man. Now, watch as I take off my hat. Gee, look at that head of hair! That ought to convince you, Skeezix. In just two short weeks, Camacora, the magic hair girl, brought me from baldness to this. 
Now, may I have my car? You betcha, can, Mr. Boyd. And what's more, I'm going to give you five gallons of free gas. Thank you, dear friend, thank you. You see, you can't cheat an honest man. Uh, uh, just a moment, Mr. Boyd. There's something in your hair. Now, you leave my hair alone. You stop that. Don't you touch my hair. Now, you... Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Just as I thought, you're wearing a wig. Look uh -huh. at him. Uh -huh. He's bald as a billiard ball. You give me back my wig. Hurry, before someone sees me. Not until you pay us our 3350. All right, all right. You in. You in. Here, here. Here it is. Here, take it. Okay. Okay, Wilmer, well, toss the rest of that phony hair tonic into his car. We don't want it. Oh, I never believed you, you crook! Now get out! Let this be a lesson to you, Wilmer. Never... Hey, under... Bobo! What the deuce did you give me to put on my head? Start thinking fast, Wilmer. It's Mr. Curly. Gee, 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 was Mr. Curly. It was a, a, a sort of a lotion. I mean, a, a kind of a tonic. Well, in a way, it was molasses, and what I mean... Whatever it is, I want more of it. Huh? You mean... It actually started to grow hair on your head, Mr. Curly? Hair on my head, nothing. That stuff took the crick out of my neck. T -t -took, took the crick out of your neck? Sure, it's wonderful stuff. All I did was rub it liberally and vigorously on my head like you said. The next thing I knew, my stiff neck was gone. Oh, 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 oh yeah, Mr. Curly. It's, it's, it's the best, best thing in the world for stiff necks. I, I, I could have told you that. You said it. I'd like to buy about ten more bottles of the stuff just to keep it handy. Now, where can I get it? Oh, uh, that's a good question, Mr. Curly. I'm sorry you asked Well, it. it's, it's, it's uh, not easy, uh, not easy to get hold of, Mr. Curly. I mean, uh, the salesman isn't in town just now, and besides, the stuff is habit-forming and use it too much. Marvel, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Believe you me. Truer words were never spoken. Your Gasoline Alley friends will be back in just a moment. Now a word from your Autolite dealer. Now, a word about the next adventure in Gasoline Alley. Here's Skeezy. Wilmer, stop play acting. You know you're not a private detective, so quit slinking around the garage talking to yourself. Why couldn't I be a private eye, Skeezy? Because you haven't had the training. Look, Skeezy, anyone with half a mind can be a private dick. Oh, in that case, you're well qualified. Well, sure, I've got half a mind. Now, look here, Skeezy. <laughs> 